In this repair video, I remove a faulty capacitor the hard way, I smell a motherboard, and I measure milliohms. I have this Dell Latitude E5450, which has the problem that when I connect the power supply, it immediately takes a lot of current and I had to shut it off because it smells burnt. And it was not the pleasant smell of toasted bread, but the smell of burnt electronics. So let's get the motherboard out and sniff which part of the motherboard is the smelliest. Now I could show you how I disassembled the laptop, but I found a really good instruction video how to do it. So check the link below if you need to disassemble a 5450 yourself. After sniffing the motherboard closely, the smell seems to come from the power connector. So let's examine it under the microscope. The connector seems to be free of any burn marks. So let's examine the surroundings of the power supply connector on the motherboard. There is your problem. This component is marked PQ4 and probably had 8 pins. It is connected to the plus of the charger connector, so this is the first MOSFET. Let's see if we can remove it. The MOSFET got so hot that it welded itself to the PCB, so removing it would mean removing the PCB tracks as well, and that will make things worse. So let's see what we can do to prepare it for a new MOSFET. The left side of the burnt MOSFET has four connected pins, so that is the drain. It connects to the second MOSFET to the drain as well, so that makes it a P-channel MOSFET. I do have many N-channel MOSFETs on spare boards, but no P-channel MOSFETs, so we'll have to order them. In the meantime, we can bypass the first MOSFET by making a little bridge from the power supply positive rail to the drain of the second MOSFET. Now, there must have been a reason for the first MOSFET to short, so let's see where the output of the MOSFET leads and check those components. To do this, we can use the wonderful BoardView software and the E5450 file linked below. We find that the output of PQ4 connects to the input of PQ700, the second MOSFET, and the output of the second MOSFET connects to the current sense resistor PR701. The output of PR701 connects to the coil PL700, and the output of the coil connects to the four capacitors below. Since these are the only components between the coil and the next MOSFET, it could very well be that one of them is shorted to ground and thereby drawing too much current through PQ4. They do measure as short, so now we have to find out which one of these is shorted. Usually laptop repair guys and gals inject some voltage and check with a thermal camera which capacitor gets hot and is therefore the shorted capacitor. Since, just like humans, some shorts are more equal than others, another way to find the shortest short, so to speak, is by measuring the capacitors with a milliohm meter. I recently bought one from AliExpress and I wonder whether it will work here. Now, at first I thought it didn't work, because the measured values are not very consistent and not very different. But while editing the video, I noticed that I'm measuring the ground side of the capacitors instead of the power side. I did touch the two largest capacitors on the power side in the end, but they only show a difference of 1 milliohm. One of the capacitors does have a bit of a darker color than the other three, so maybe we should just take the chance and desolder that one. If it is the wrong one, we can always replace it with a spare capacitor. How about we leave those capacitors for a second and make that little bridge to bypass the first MOSFET first. First expose a bit of the copper layer so we have something to solder onto. Then we add some flux.
and then we apply a little bit of solder. And then solder the properly calibrated wire. Now back to the shorted capacitor. Let's remove it. No luck with the soldering iron. Not much luck with the heat gun either. And even my little friend wasn't able to remove it completely. So let's bring out the power tools. And the short is gone. So here I connected the display, stuck in some memory, connected my bench power supply at 19 volts. Now let's press the power button. It could take a while because we reset the BIOS. Let's hope for the best. And the laptop is working again. We will of course replace the capacitor in a different video and we will see if we are able to solder one of those tiny MOSFETs where the old one used to be. For now, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I hope you will join me in the next video. Bye then!